Wow, these turned out beautiful and I can't wait to show you how to do it. Hi everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. Many of you have asked to be able to take the X-Tool rotary roller with the chuck attachment on it and show you how to be able to use it. A lot of you have said that you're using the laser box and want to switch to light burn. So in today's video, I'm going to take the opportunity to be able to show you how to set it up in light burn, get it calibrated, and then do some engraving. I've taken the cable and plugged it into the back of the rotary roller, and I'm now going to plug it in to the control board this time. In the previous video, I plugged it in to the y-axis. So this end is going to be plugged in right here at this point. Now this actually is controlling the z-axis, and that's very, very important to note. In Lightburn software, you actually have to go into the settings and enable the z-axis for this to actually function. The y-axis, even though you don't need it, is still actually active and functional. There's some basic settings that we need to take care of first. So let's go to the edit menu and settings. This window pops up and this one we need to turn on. Show the rotary enable on the main window. So let's turn that on, click OK. And you'll see that pop up right down here on the bottom left hand side. So let's go ahead and turn that on now. With that set up, let's come up to the tools menu, slide down to the rotary tools setup, and let's select the chuck. We're also going to be using the Z axis this time. So forget about the Y, we're going to use the Z axis on this video today. Now we need to take a look at these settings. And the first one is the object diameter. So we'll get out the calipers and let's measure this. That's 3.805. Now that's in inches. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that in as the 3.805. And that will calculate the circumference for me. And that is going to be the important element that we need to be able to use. I'm going to go ahead and open this up one more time for the rotary setup. You can see I have the 3.805 entered in for the object diameter. And the uh, circumference is calculated right there for you. So the circumference with the 3.8 inches is going to be 11.95376. I want to come back over to the main window now and select this rectangle tool. And I'm going to make a rectangle because this is, in essence, like a piece of paper that would wrap completely around the cup. And that's basically how we're going to be using this, but we're going to use the computer to do it. Now, at this point, I need the height to be the actual circumference. So go ahead and put that number in for your uh, actual circumference. And then as far as the width, you need to go ahead and have this down to a very small number. I actually put the width in here as two inches and that's really way too big. And then I changed it to one inch, not even thinking. In my mind, I was thinking that was one millimeter, but it's not. It was actually one inch. Now I went ahead and changed this on the zero zero line to a line. I don't need this being a fill. And I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see this. So this is, in essence, my piece of paper that will wrap completely around the cup. Again, we're going to use the computer to do this, though. But I want to change this width. I want to get the width down to 0.1 of an inch. Make sure that this is unlocked. And on the width, I'm going to go ahead and enter in the 0.1. And, of course, the height is the correct number. So there's my little strip now. A lot of people will take masking tape or painter's tape and wrap it around the cup to be able to engrave this, but I'm going to do this a little bit different way. Now granted, the painter's tape would be a little bit more accurate, but for what I'm doing, this will work just fine. And I've shown how to use the painter's tape with this method in other videos. Next thing we need to do is calibrate how many millimeters per rotation. So I put a little piece of tape here just to make sure that I knew exactly the start point. And then I'm going to go ahead and click start, and we're going to run this. And you can see that it's turning right around exactly where it needs to go. And let's see where it stops. Should stop right there. And it does. So that is very, very close. 
and that's taken me a couple of um, adjustments to be able to get exactly where it needs to be. Another way you can do, I have a little tiny pencil mark right here, and I can put my pencil right on that point, and I'm going to hit start, and we'll run that again. And this will actually be a little bit more accurate. And it's coming up on the point. And it's just shy of making that complete circle. So I'm going to go ahead and make a small change on my setting. The main reason I didn't use the painter's tape, I was afraid that that painter tape would pull off this tempera paint. So come back up here to the tools, come down to the rotary setup, and this was at 1425. I need very, very little. As, so I'm gonna put this at 1435, and we're gonna run this one more time. So I'm gonna hit okay, and then we're gonna run this job once more. Now I'm gonna use my pencil again, holding it right on that point. We'll hit start. That's almost perfect. So I think I'm going to call that good at 1435. At this point, now you know that 1,435 millimeters per rotation is what this chuck is doing. Yes. So at this point, the next thing I want to make sure is that I am actually going to be facing the right direction. I need to rotate my image to the right 90 degrees because this is the open end of the glass. Now this is a very strange cup because it is round at the top but it tapers down and it's a pentagon shape at the bottom. But still the main engraving area, I wanna be able to keep that level and I wanna keep the chuck itself parallel to the gantry. So we're gonna make some small adjustments to make sure that it's exactly where it needs to be. I've also painted this glass all the way around. This is my test subject glass. And this also needs to be level on this flat portion as well. With all the calibrations done, the only thing left to do is to frame this to make sure it's going to fit exactly where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start, and we're going to frame exactly where this is going to engrave. And I have this at very low power. Not sure if you're going to be able to see that dot. That actually looks real good. I think that is going to work just fine. So we're going to go ahead and engrave this and see what it looks like. I do need to adjust the power setting. So I'm going to open up the library, come right up here to my picture frame glass. I'm going to open that up and I have an etch fill for my glasses. So that's the one that I want to be able to select. Now with the actual layer selected, I can go ahead and highlight this, add it to the layer, and you can see that those settings will drop right into position. Now the important thing is I need this at 30 inches per minute and 60% power. I need to change that to this other one also. So again, we're just going to identify the layer, click on add to the layer, and you can see that change right there. The next thing I need to do is make sure that I change this to a line. The little pink portion there in the center for the pelican has to be a line, and on the other layer for the green layer, that has to be the fill. You also notice on the image that it's not quite a perfect circle. I had to adjust the width of this to be able to fit the uh, curvature of the glass. Now this was a little bit of a challenge because of how this glass was tapered. So this is not absolutely perfect, but it's close. So you can see that that is at 1.75 and then the other measurement is about 1.87. Now at this point, we've hit the start and it's actually engraving. And this would be absolutely perfect if I had used the y-axis connection as I had in the previous video. But in this case, we've got an error. 
Take a look at this. This is actually an engraving in an opposite direction. I need to mirror this. And this is something that you must do in the uh, light burn. Right up here, you've got to flip that image. So once I have it flipped, well, I'll be able to do this on the next engrave. I actually decided to go ahead and let this finish engraving because, yeah, it could be a little bit of a joke glass to be able to see when you look inside of this glass, it's going to show the correct way. But on the outside, it's going to be reversed. And then I'm going to flip this glass over and wish it was four sides instead of five, but it's not. But I'm going to engrave it in the correct direction on the other side of the glass. But this shows you what happens and why you need to test, test, and do some more tests. So please make sure that when you're using this setup that you actually flip it on the horizontal so that you get this oriented correctly. Now this was an error that I did not expect because it worked perfectly on the last engraving, but again, I used a y-axis. Now in a previous video, I actually typed out the word test and ran my little test job to make sure that it was oriented correct. I didn't do that on this one. Shame on me. The other thing I want to point out is while this was engraving on that first side, I made the change. You can make changes in the software while it's engraving because everything's already been downloaded and it's in the uh, control board. So now we finished the other side and we're hitting start again and we're making our second engrave. And I think you'll see a big difference this time. Now this time it's coming out and it's looking really, really good. Now the difference being the last video that I did, I actually used the y-axis with the... Now in the last video, I plugged it in right here for that cable and this was running off of the y-axis and it was oriented correctly. In this video, I'm actually plugging it in to the control board itself and this actually is on the z-axis and that makes all the difference in the world. But when it's plugged into the z-axis, you need to be able to mirror the image so that it will engrave correctly. Now, if you're using this rotary roller on a different machine and you're actually plugging it into the y-axis, more than likely, you're not going to need to mirror the image. But the only way to know for sure is to be able to do a test engrave first. Okay, this is all finished now. We're going to go ahead and loosen this up. We're going to remove this. We'll slide it out of the way. And we'll remove this cup. And this time, the image looks fantastic. And the only thing that was wrong with the other one is it had just mirrored. And that was because we had used the Z-axis versus using the Y-axis. So with this success now, I'm going to go ahead and put the other ones in and get them engraved. I hope you found this video useful to be able to show you exactly how to set up the rotary roller with the chuck attachment on it because this is an amazing tool. In the instructions it says that you can engrave up to a hundred millimeters. Well this cup is actually 96.6 so it just about maxes it out and it has worked perfect even with the extreme heavy bottom. That's just how easy it is to be able to change it out. We're going to put the level on back here to make sure that it's level because that will get me in the center. That looks real good. And the next thing we'll do now that this is all set up, we'll change the image. And because I may want to do this image again, I'm going to go ahead and save it and put it in the art library. And to be able to do that, all I need to be able to do is right here, click on this one that says import graphic from the project. And it's going to ask me for a name. And I'm going to put in the mirror. And we'll put in LT for Lieutenant. And I just hit OK and it saved it. 
From there, I just cut this image and it's time to bring in the next image. And all I need to be able to do is just size it and hit start and it'll be engraving perfectly. Of course, you have to be able to rotate it to 90 degrees to be able to get it oriented to the end of the cup. And you have to, don't forget, you have to mirror this image. And of course, I'm going to put the size exactly as I did before, to 1.75 inches on the uh, width and 1.87 on the height. And that will take care of it. All I need to do is just hit the start button and we'll be able to finish this job. Well, there you have it. All the details to be able to set up your rotary roller with the chuck accessory to be able to get perfect engraves each and every time. If you like this video today, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So for now, bye-bye.